Welcome to OMB Warehouse and the Gray Goat Garage. Today I'm going to show you how to remove the flywheel off this stock Predator 212 engine. This is an easy operation and it's something that I get asked all the time. We include an 8 degree kit in a lot of our performance stage kits and nobody ever uses it. It will add performance to your engine build and help your engine run a lot better, especially with uh, some upgrades from one of our performance kits. So let's get started. What you'll need for this operation is an eight millimeter socket and ratchet, a three quarter inch or 19 millimeter socket, a torque wrench, good to 54 foot pounds, a large screwdriver, and what I like to call my big fun hammer or BFH. Th this is important. A small hammer like this is not your friend here. You need a large hammer. So I'm going to use some power tools to get this done a little bit quicker. So I'm going to remove the four blower housing bolts. I also keep a magnet close by so I can fish out these bolts before I lose them. I've also disconnected the kill switch and I'm just going to gently move this out and I'm going to bring the bottom end up first so this top notch clears these governor rods and everything. I'll set this off to the side and then we'll get started. I already have a fixture on the back side of the engine to hold the crankshaft in place. Um, if you have an impact wrench that's okay to use that to take this off, just don't use it to put it back on. Um, if you don't have that, then you'll need a friend to help you hold it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this nut off that holds on the flywheel cup and the plastic fan. And now you can see our flywheel. From here I'm going to use my big screwdriver and I'm going to slide it up underneath the flywheel. And I'm going to brace myself here and I'm going to pull outwards on the screwdriver. After I put my nut back on, and I'm just going to screw this nut down just so it's above the crankshaft. I don't want to hit the crankshaft with my big hammer. So with the large hammer, I'm just going to tap this like this. This is not about hitting it hard. This is about giving it some shock load to break the taper and the seal on this taper. So I'm going to pull out on my screwdriver and I'm just going to give this a tap. The screwdriver falls, but the flywheel did not as the nut holds it in place. Now I can take the nut off and take my flywheel off. At this point, we'll get the engine rotated around so you can see the keyway and the key will pop out of the groove with just a thin screwdriver. You'll notice that it's a half moon shaped key. What I want you to remember is when installing an advanced key, you need to have the step on the key to face the front of the engine. If you put it in backwards, then it'll retard the ignition further and you really won't be running well. So make sure that the step on the key is facing towards the front of the engine just in this orientation that I've shown you. Okay, so I'm going to put the stock key back in this because we are going to be building this engine for performance at a later date. I'm just going to tap that in ever so gently. The half moon side in first. Then I'm going to remount my flywheel and I want to push this on as far as I can. I'm going to take the plastic fan and align the index holes so it's up there and then you'll notice that there's some some different marks here we're going to want to align those align this little nipple with the crankshaft just like that and then we're going to put our nut on i 
I will need to use my flywheel holder to hold this in place so we can torque it back down. If you don't have one of these tools, which I'll show you in a second, then bring friends because you'll need some friends to help you hold this down. My torque wrench is set for 54 foot-pounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly torque this down, get everything seated, and then get to 54 foot-pounds. This is where you do not want to use an impact wrench. What happens is that key is only a reference point for you. It does nothing to hold the flywheel in place. What holds the flywheel is the mating of the tapers between the, the crankshaft and the flywheel that holds everything in place. A lot of the racer guys don't use a key at all. They just rely on that taper to hold everything in place. <clears throat> I have a tool here that allows me to lock the crank down so I can get it torqued down. If you don't have that, you'll have to figure out a way to either hold the flywheel with a strap wrench or bring friends. Do not use an impact on this nut because that will break the flywheel. I've had customers call me and say, Eric, thank you for suggesting the billet flywheel. I pulled my existing flywheel off. It was already starting to radiate cracks out from the center. I don't like that when this flywheel, if it is degraded and comes apart, it'll fly through the, the blower housing, the gas tank, your leg, whatever is in the way. So be very careful when you do this. To put the flywheel cover back on, make sure your kill switch wires are out of the way. Again, angle the bottom up, move around your governor rods, and then position this on the engine. I don't want to tighten all the bolts down to get started. What I'd like to see you do is go slowly, just get them started on each four corners, tighten it down, and there you have it. That's all there is to it. Thanks for stopping by OMB Warehouse. Visit us online, ombwarehouse.com. And thanks for hanging out at the Grego Garage. Thank you.